Hi, this is going to be an example of how to use superposition to solve this circuit. This means we're going to solve it separately for each source. And although we have to solve it twice, each circuit that we solve is a fair bit easier. We're going to make heavy use of voltage dividers, current dividers, and combining resistors in series and parallel. So this is kind of typical of superposition. Rather than solve one kind of complicated set of equations, you solve a lot of really simple equations, kind of really basic sort of chapter two stuff, rather than the, the chapter three kind of advanced analysis technique stuff. Okay, so here's the here's the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to zero the current source and see what the voltage source creates for node voltage at A and node voltage at B just by itself. And then we're going to repeat the same thing by zeroing the voltage source and seeing what the current source does to each of those setups. All right. So we've copied the circuit, we're going to paste it over here. And then if we want to zero the current source, that means that it has zero current. So it's like that whole section is is just gone. We're not we don't have any current flowing from A to B. So looking at it now, you can see that we've got a setup where the R4 and R3 are in series, and then we've got that in parallel with R2, which then itself is in series with R1. So we can write out what VA is using a voltage divider, kind of like this whole resistance block is one element, and then this resistor is the other one. So we could say VA is equal to R, let's call that 234 over R234 plus R1 times V1, where R234 is equal to R2 in parallel with R3 and, whoops, magnifier, hotkey, uh, with R3 and R4 in series. Okay, so there is, there is the pretty quick way to find VA using superposition. And then once we've got that, you say, hey, wait a minute, VA is applied across R3, R4 and R3 in series. So we can jump from there to go VB is a voltage divider between R3 and R4. So this would be R3 over R3 plus R4 times VA. Okay, now, this is the this is what's created by just v1 by itself. So if you're going to try to combine this with stuff later, maybe we should give these different, different subscripts. So maybe we'll call this va1 to say that it's just the one that's just the va that's created by v by the first source, and then we'll call this maybe vb1 in terms of va1 there. Now we need to do the same kind the same sort of a setup for the current source and solve the whole problem again. Let's give that a shot. So going back to the original problem here, copying that over, if we're going to zero the, the voltage source instead, then what we get is zero volts across this. So hmm, let's how to do this. We'll maybe, maybe delete that and then use a new wire to kind of connect that to there. Yeah, seamless. Okay, so here's the here's the circuit redrawn with the voltage source zeroed. And now we have a we have a different problem to solve. So we have just a current source to deal with. Now, uh, a little bit of comment here, why is it that we replace the current source with an open, but the voltage source with a with a short, it's because that's what zero volts versus zero amps does. Zero amps means no current can flow through there, so it's an open circuit. Zero volts means there's no voltage dro drop across it for any current, which means it's a short circuit. So looking at this, we can find out what VA is relative to the, the ground if we figure out what the current is that's going through this branch versus this branch. So we have, we have kind of a complicated circuit here still, this is a current divider between R4 on one side, and R1, R2 in parallel 
which itself is in series with R3 on the other side. So the amount of current that goes in this downward path, if we can figure out that, then we can split that current between this resistor and this resistor in order to figure out how much goes um, how much goes through each if we want it. Or actually, I guess if we've combined them both in parallel, then we can just take that current multiplied by that resistance in order to figure out the voltage drop across it. Yeah, okay. So first step is to find out how much current of the 20 milliamps goes this way versus how much goes this way. And we can do that with a current divider. So that'll be I, let's call that I down. So meaning the current that goes in the down path as opposed to the upward path. And that would be equal to I1, so the total 20 milliamp current. Then by a current divider, you do the opposite resistance. So R4 over the total resistance here, which we could call similar to the last setup, R123 plus R4. So same kind of formula as the voltage divider, except with the opposite resistance in sticking around in the numerator rather than the resistance of the path that you're going through. Okay, so that is the current that's going in the downward path. And we'll say where R123 means R1 in parallel with R2, which itself is in series with R3. All right, now once you've got that, we can say that VA would be the voltage drop just across R1 and R2 in, in parallel. So VA, and let's call this VA2 to say that it's the second one from superposition. VA2 would be I, I down multiplied by R1 in parallel with R2. And VB is now a voltage drop compared to zero. So we'll say zero minus VB2 is equal to the current that went through the down branch multiplied by R3. So that would be an Ohm's law applied to this branch to tell us what VB is. Okay, so this is the set of equations that you could use to find the voltage at A and B from just the voltage source and then from just the current source. Once you've got these, we'll say total, so from both sources, VA would be VA1 plus VA2, and similarly VB is VB1 plus VB2. Although in this example, it was probably more work to, do, to use superposition than some of those other techniques than mesh and node analysis. If the circuit is a little bit simpler, then after we eliminate one of the sources, you could, you could picture that it might be kind of a thing where you can solve it right away in your head. So if this turns the, well, it turns a, a two, a three mesh circuit into kind of like two, two mesh circuits, if that's kind of good, but in another example, it might turn a two mesh circuit into two one mesh circuits, which is going to be a lot faster. So superposition really shines if the circuit isn't too, too complicated.